Ginger from my sister Scrapper. Are you ready to start our vertical paper bag mini album? Um, I hope you've got all your supplies ready because we're going to go ahead and get started. This is going to be a series of uh, videos. We're going to create the mini album from start to finish. So the first thing we're going to do is you need to take your paper pad and um, whatever paper collection you're using. This is the one that I'm going to use. It's today, tomorrow, and forever recollection paper pad that I got this at Michael's. And go ahead and flip through it and pull out, decide what you want for your um, front and back covers. Um, I need to do this because otherwise I will get carried away and I will get to the end of my mini album project and I won't have any paper left for my uh, covers. So go ahead and decide what uh, paper you want to use for your front and for your back covers. And for me, I've decided I'm kind of leaning towards a couple different ones. I think this is the one I'm going to use. I'm going to go ahead and use this um, wood grain right here with the little uh, doilies on it. I think I'm going to use that for my... It's either going to be that one or it's going to be this one. I'm not sure yet. So those are the two that I pulled out that I'm going to save and uh, not use yet for my mini album. So what we want to do next is go ahead and get your paper bags. And again, I'm using the celebrated paper bags. Um... You need six paper bags, and these are the four and five eighths by two and seven eighths by eight and five eighths. And I'm going to use the craft color because I think that will look really good with my paper. So go ahead and get six paper bags. And you can put the rest away. And what you want to do then is get your paper trimmer out. And um, we're going to go ahead and trim our paper bags down. Now, when you go to trim your paper bags, just make sure that you're consistent when you lay them on your, um, your cutter. Either the flat side is facing you or the pocket side is facing you. It doesn't matter, but just be consistent um, when you trim all of your paper bags. Just make sure you have them all facing the same way. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put our paper bag, just like you pulled it right out of the package, and we're going to go ahead and trim our paper bags down to 8 and 1... Quarter. So go ahead and put the end of the paper bag on the eight and one quarter mark, and that's what we're trimming off. Okay, so do that to all six of your bags. So once you've got all of your bags to trim down, we're going to go ahead and Put our cutter aside and then get either your bone folder or um, a score, something to uh, crease your bags. I got this fabulous new tool and it's kind of pricey but it's really yummy. It's I got it for, at scrap a dap -a and it's um, a paper presser like a, a bone folder but it's not really bone. It's made out of Teflon so nothing sticks to it so it's quite fabulous because my poor little Martha Stewart bone folder was getting pretty cruddy looking. Anyway go ahead and just reinforce the creases on your paper bags especially this little pop, uh, flap here because we are going to use that for a pocket. Just get them as flat as you can. And I know this seems kind of tedious, but it does make for a nicer mini album if your bags are as flat as possible because that way, because you know, remember we're dealing with paper bags, so they might not be the squarest little things, but um, it just helps with your project to look a little more neater. Yeah, don't know how I ever got along without this puppy. Favorite tool of 2012. Also my favorite tool for the new year, 2013. Love it. Okay. So there's our super duper flat paper bags. So we'll go ahead and set our paper bags aside for right now and then get your paper trimmer back out. And now we're going to go ahead and add, um, cut the paper for our flaps. So you can use um, eight and a half by 11 paper, which is what I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna use the craft that matches my bags pretty much. And we're gonna put a flap on every bag. So we're gonna need um, six flaps. So if you're using eight and a half by 11, you can get um, two out of one sheet so i'm going to use three pieces of paper here and for our flaps 
we're going to cut them our bags where is my ruler here it is our bags roughly measure um, four and three quarters inches wide and we do want to allow a little bit because we don't want our flap to interfere with our our binding system over here so I'm gonna make the flaps be um, four and a half inches and I need to have a little flap to glue onto my paper bag so I'm gonna make I'm gonna cut my paper to five inches wide by eight inches tall okay so we're gonna go ahead and take our paper I think that's what I wrote down but let me check our flaps are going to be cut at 8 by 5. So go ahead and trim your paper down to 8 inches. And 5 inches. So the good thing about using the 8.5 by 11 is you don't have a lot of waste. So those are going to be for our flap. So we need six of those because we're going to put a flap on every bag. Okay, and again, that's all the waste we had from one eight and a half by 11 was that. So that's pretty good. So we've got our six flaps. Now what we need to do is get our scoring board out and My portal scoring board is. See how yucky my bone folder is? That's why I love this thing. It doesn't get dirty. Nothing sticks to it. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and take each one of our flaps and we're going to put it in our scoreboard with the five inside this way and the eight inches going down and we're going to score at four and a half inches. Okay. So that's going to do that to every flap. Okay, so we're done with our scoreboard for now. So then what we're going to do is go ahead and fold on our score lines. And give it a really good crease. So that's going to be what we attach to our paper bag, that little half inch flap. So go ahead and fold in your score line on all six of your flaps. Okay, so that we have all six of our flaps folded on the score line. Now what we want to do is we want to get our score tape, whatever super strong adhesive you're using, go ahead and um, grab that. I'm using this, um, I used to use score tape because it's my favorite, but I'm, I got some scrappy tape right now, so I'm going to use that right now. Same thing, well, same strength I should say, but I do prefer the score tape better. And I use the quarter inch. So go ahead and um, put your score tape or your double sided adhesive on the flap on both sides. And remember you don't want to go over your score line, you just want to put it on the flap. I usually kind of center my, um, if you use the half inch it's really nice but um, I'm only using the quarter inch but you can center it kind of in the middle, it's fine. So go ahead and do that to all six of your oopsie, flaps, front and back. Okay, so then what you want to do is just go ahead and burnish your tape. Um, I know it's kind of time consuming to do this, but it does make, number one, the adhesive stick a lot better and it makes the backing of the tape come off a lot easier if you burnish your tape. Now what you want to do next is decide if you want to do a decorative edge along here or if you want to do a decorative corner. Um, because we'll do that, we'll punch that before we add our flaps to our paper bags. It'll just make it a little bit easier to punch. So decide what you're going to use. Um, I think, well, I haven't decided which, I like to decide which one I think is going to match my paper. I kind of thought I might want to use this lace one here like I did on the um, 
my last one that I did, the Valentine one, because it's kind of got the lace and then the doily and that wood grain paper would be kind of cute. But then I got this little Fiskars one, and I'm thinking I might want to use it. So let's see, take a scrap piece of paper and then we'll decide what I want to do. Hmm, yep, I kind of like that one. I think I'm going to use this one. So, go ahead and punch away. Ladies, you're going to go ahead and put your punch in there and just punch. I'm just going to do the outside two corners. Like that. So do that to all your flaps if you're going to do a decorative edge. And you can, if you don't have a de decorative punch, you can just go ahead and leave it square. Or you can use just a corner rounder and just round the corners if you want. So now what we want to do is go ahead and get our paper bags back and bring them back in. Now the way the paper bag is going to work is we're going to have the flat side facing us and we're going to have the flap on the right hand side. So it's going to go like this. And the reason why I do it that way is to, is to eliminate the bulk so the flap will stay closed because if we were to put it on this side, you've got this pocket here and then you've got this, it, it would just be too much. So um, the left side is always your binding and the right side is where you're going to attach your flap. And what we're going to do is the paper bags have this gusset along here on both sides. The left gusset we're going to attach to our hinge system and then the other gusset on the right is what we're going to attach our paper bags or our flaps to the paper bags. But as you see, when you put it in there, it doesn't fit because the way the paper bag is folded with that bottom up, you've kind of got an angle corner here. So we have to angle off our, um, our flaps on the hinge and it's easier to put the score tape on and then cut it than try to, you know, put the score tape on with an angle on it. So what I usually do is I just get my scissors and there's no measurement here. I just kind of eyeball it. It needs to be a pretty sharp angle. So you're going to start at your fold here. And just cut up like this and then take your paper bag and see if it's gonna fit in there so again we made our paper bags a little bit smaller so yeah that'll work just like that so I just cut off that little tiny bit like that but again it has to be a really sharp angle so it should look like this from the um, score mark up to the outside edge so that little piece right there is what I took off so we're going to do that to all of our flaps. So what I like to do is go ahead and make sure it fits before I pull the backing off of my tape. And I have found that after doing these a, a few times, the best way to do it is to go ahead and pull the backing off of one side of your tape first. And I like to do it on the, the end side piece. So go ahead and take the backing off your tape. And you're going to go ahead, and this is how I just do mine. I just sit it in there. And again, you don't want it to stick yet because you want to make sure you get it pretty even. So we're going to put it in there like this. And don't go over your your fold, your, your score line, because then your flap won't fold very well. And you just kind of press it down like that. And then take your little tool here. So we've adhered the flap to the bag on this side. Now we just need to pull the backing off inside, like so, and then press it down. So there you have it. That's your first page one. Love it. So again, the left is going to be our binding, so our page is going to be attached to our book like this. So we're going to have a flap, we're going to turn the page, and we're going to have a pocket. Okay. So go ahead and attach the flap to the other bags. So we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and put the rest of these flaps on. Oh, 
Okay, there we go. We have all of our bags done, and they all have a flap on them. How cool is that? Look how fast that was. Super easy, huh? Okay, so we're done with our bags right now, and so what we're going to do next is we're going to cut our chipboard. 